Interpretation of the Holy Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. With the help of Allah, we have started to have a brief interpretation of Quran, and we reach to chapter Masad, chapter 111 of Quran. Please listen to verse one to three. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب الله تبارك وتعالى says تبت يدا أبي لهب Perdition overtakes both hands of Abu Lahab and he will perish. His wealth and what he earns will not avail him. He shall soon burn in fire those flames. This chapter is famous by the name of Tabat and Masad. Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, said, anybody recites this chapter, it is good, and it is recommended to curse Abu Lahab. This narration is brought in Tafsir Kanzu Daqaiq. When Allah wa Ta'ala revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, this verse, وَأَنْذِرْ أَشِيرَتِكَ الْأَغْرَبِينَ in chapter Shu'ara, verse 214, Prophet, peace be upon him, in Mecca, invited his family and talked to them and invited them to convert to Islam. When he did so, his uncle Abu Lahab said, تَبَّنْ لَكْ He said, Predation to you, O Muhammad. It means he cursed Prophet, peace be upon him, and he started to fight with Muhammad, the Prophet, until Allah Taala revealed this chapter and said, Tabadada Abi Lahabin Watab. As we know, Allah Taala cursed. Abu Lahab and Abu Lahab and his wife, both of them, were fighting with the Prophet. They had a problem all the time publicly. They were going here and there in different places to curse Prophet, peace be upon him, until Allah in this chapter, chapter Masad, he cursed Abu Lahab and his wife when he said, وَمْرَأَتُهُ حَمَّالَةَ الْحَتَبِ It is like a prophecy when Allah Taala says, تَبَّدْ يَدَى أَبِي لَهَبٍ وَتَبْ As we know in the history, Abu Lahab was famous and he had a lot of facilities but Allah Taala, as He announced that He is not going to succeed, and ma agna an humaluhu wa ma kasab, and His wealth, His property, and anything He earns are not going to help Him. He died, He passed away, while He was denying Allah, and He had a hard time, and until today, any Muslims recites Quran, he is going to curse him and his wife. 
When Allah Tabarakya Ta'ala says Tabbat, the root of the word of Tabbat in Arabic is Tabba. Tab means losing and demolish. When Allah says Yada Abi Lahab, it means Allah curse. And he says, two hands of Abu Lahab will be demolished. It means it is a kind of telling that his power, his ability, his facility will not help him. So, Yada, it means two hands, but it doesn't mean really his hands. It means his power and his authority. Allah curse it until he will lose his ability. This meaning is mentioned in Tafsir Al-Mizan, which belongs to Allama Taba Tabai. It is mentioned in the history that Prophet, peace be upon him, was going to the market, was passing the people and telling, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. And Abu Lahab, his uncle, was walking behind the Prophet, peace be upon him, and throwing a stone to the Muhammad, peace be upon him, and cursing him. Sometimes the visitors were coming from different cities, different places to see Muhammad because in different places people were hearing here and there that a young person with the name Muhammad claimed that he is a prophet. They were coming from different places to the Mecca to visit prophet. Sometimes they were coming to Abu Lahab asking him that who is Muhammad and what does he say? Abu Lahab was telling them that he, it means Muhammad, is insane. He is not normal. He is mad. And we are going to cure him. We use some medicine or take him to the doctor to help him. This is mentioned in Tafsir Nemune. As it is mentioned in the history, until Abu Lahab passed away, he did not stop to fight the Prophet and even to insult him publicly. He fought, he fought with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his wife was helping him until Allah revealed this verse, Tabbad yada Abi Lahabin wa Tab. They passed away, Abu Lahab and his wife, and we can say even their bones crumbled. But still, the Muslims are cursing them. It means anybody who is fighting with Allah or the Prophet. Time is not important. We should fight and curse them and curse their ideology, regardless that they passed away or not. Even today, there are some people intentionally they are ready to fight with the religion with islam with the prophet sometimes a person says i'm not convinced although i try my best to understand but when a person understands the truth but still he is ready to insult to humiliate this is the time that allah ta'ala curse himself and ask the people to curse such a people. Allah says, curse the oppressors. And he curse himself in different verses of Quran, the oppressors. Oppressors are those people who intentionally fight with innocent people and oppress them. Abu Lahab, uncle, Prophet's uncle, had several brothers like Hamza, Abu Talib, that they were very great people and they helped Islam a lot and Muhammad, peace be upon him. 
His grandfather was Abdul Muttalib. But this person, of course, even in a good family, it happens. Abu Lahab. So two brothers are Hamza and Abu Talib, but one brother, Abu Lahab, and his wife, that Allah says, وَمْرَأَتُهُ حَمَّالَةَ الْحَتَبِ this person was very rich and he was thinking that he has facilities. Nobody can hurt him. Nobody is able to fight with him. But when Allah decides to fight with a person, although he has given the facility, even sometimes the position, but he must understand that he cannot resist to fight with Allah. Allah had a prophecy here when he said, his wealth, his property, his facility, his position, his ability, none of them helped him in the community, in the society, and he was cursed by Allah and by all the Muslims from that time until today. When Allah Taala talks about certain peoples that in judgment day they have a hard time. They were sinners and they did not ask forgiveness. In judgment day they say, Ma agna anni mali. My property, my wealth did not help me. Halaka anni sultaniya. Chapter Haqqa, verse 29. My authority demolished and it did not help me. Ma agna ankum jam'ukum. Your people did not help you and did not do anything, did not prevent any punishment from you. In chapter Araf, verse 48. In chapter Al Imran, verse 10, Allah Taala says, "Lan tuqniya anhum amwalhum wa la auladhum." When Allah is going to punish these people, they will see that their money and their children, which could help them a little in the world, but when Allah is decided to punish them, none of them could do anything. We should try to understand that if we have some facilities, we and our belongings, all of them belong to somebody else, which is Allah. Allah is, has given us temporary some ability. He has decided to give us some facilities to see what is our reaction. Can we control our desires or not? If we control our desire, desires, then we will be good worshipper and good servant for Allah. So this is the reasons that some people in this world are losers and some are winners. We will see that in Islamic history, one person like Abu Lahab, who is Prophet's uncle will be cursed by Quran and one person who is not a member of a family like Salman Farsi, he is coming from far away from another place and he becomes very close to the Prophet until he says Salmanun minna, Salman is one of us. One will come from far away and will be considered as a very close friend. And another person is a closer family and a member of the family and will be cursed by Quran and Prophet. <laughs> is telling us that the announce of hatred is a part of religion. If we love the Prophet, 
we should dislike his enemy. It is impossible and this is wrong to say, I love Quran and I respect anybody who fight with Quran. Not the person who doesn't believe, this is something else, the person who fights. Of course, we should hate them and we should curse the oppressors. The punishment for those people who fight with Allah should be permanent. Allah said in Quran, Tabbad yada abi lahabin wa tab, it means he cursed them, he cursed Abu Lahab and his followers and it is permanent as long as we are alive and the Quran is alive which is alive until the end of this world they should be cursed because they fought with Allah it is our duty and responsibility to pray against such a people as we respect the followers of Quran we should be enemy for whoever fights with our religion and our prophet, peace be upon him. We should understand that in Islamic cultures, Islamic rules, Islamic laws, there is a very, very strict law. And that is, whoever respects the religion is a friend and whoever disrespect and fight with the religion is the enemy regardless that he is a family or not Abu Lahab was a family but he disrespect and he became he became enemy the money wealth property are not going to help when we or somebody fight with Allah Allah says ma agna anhu ma luhu wa ma kasab the money and wealth and ability are not going to help when Allah decide to destroy and demolish a person. We should ask Allah to help us at the same time that He is going to help us with the facility. He will give us the capacity to use them in a proper way. We ask Allah to help us to use our position, our degree, our education, all abilities that we have in his way and in the way that he loves it. Thank you very much for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.